Ashadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah Ashadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah Hayya ala salat Hayya نحمده ونستعينه ونستفتح بالذي هو خير الحمد لله في السراء وفي الضراء الحمد لله الذي هدانا سبلنا الحمد لله أول النهار وآخرة الحمد لله من قبل الفتح وبعده الحمد لله على كل حال وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده بلا شريك وقل الحمد لله الذي لم يتخذ ولدا ولم يكن له شريك في الملك ولم يكن له ولي من الذل وكبره تكبيرا الملك القدود السلام المؤمن المهيمن العزيز الجبار المتكبر سبحان الله عما يشركون وأشهد أن سيدنا ومولانا محمدا صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم عبده ورسوله يا أيها النبي جاهد الكفار واغلظ عليهم محمد رسول الله والذين معه فشداء على الكفار رحماء بينهم يا أيها المدثر قم فأنذر وربك فكبر يا 
فيطع الله ورسوله وأولي الأمر من المؤمنين فهو على صراط الله المستقيم من غير المغضوب عليهم ومن غير الضالين ومن يعص الله ورسوله وأولي الأمر من المؤمنين فهو من المغضوب عليهم ومن الضالين أما بعد معشر المؤمنين Allah says with words of truth and the expression of the fact. He says, Inna Allah la yahdi al-qawm al-zalimeen. Allah does not guide people. who are zalim and he says inna Allah la yuhibbu zalimeen indeed Allah does not favor zalim and Allah's prophet says ظلم ظلمات يوم القيامة ظلم injustice tyranny oppression maltreatment الظلم ظلمات يوم القيامة this ظلم darkness on the day of resurrection and in a hadith Qudsi Allah and his prophet say Ya Ibadi إني حرمت الظلم على نفسي وجعلته بينكم محرما فلا تظالموا My subject My servant I have rendered injustice by myself as being prohibited I have rendered the performance of injustice personally no injustice will be done by me Allah says Ya Ibadi Inni harramtu zulma ala nafsi I've made zulm illegal as concerns me, Allah says, meaning that he will not be involved in any acts of zulm or injustice or oppression. Inni harramtu zulm ala nafsi wajaltuhu baynakum muharrama and I have rendered this zulm as a matter of illegality and illegitimacy and prohibition among you. فلا 
Savalamu. Then do not be party to the act of Rulm. Don't partake in the system of Rulm. Ya ibadi, inni harramtu al-zulm ala nafsi wa ja'altuhu baynakum muharrama fala tazalamu. These ayahs and hadith and Hadith Qudsi are a direct address to the established Zulm in the world today. But there are opinion makers, there are publicists, there is a media within a strategy that don't permit us to identify the mega zulm in this world. They want us only to be able to see the mini zulm in this world. It is haram for you and for me to begin to identify the establishment of zulm on a global scale. But we are all welcome to try to focus on zulm on a local scale. And Allah Azza wa Jal wants us to open our eyes and see this zulm in full scope and with all the colors of the spectrum. The world, literally the world, has been fixated in the past two or three weeks on an event that has the media mouthpieces pointing accusations and suggestions that Muslims are to some extent guilty of what has happened in New York and in Washington and elsewhere. And we say to them with a full measure of our mind and our heart that Muslims are not about killing innocent human beings. They kill innocent human beings and then they decorate their act by saying they regret collateral damage. When innocent Muslims are killed, we become collateral damage. But none dare say that when innocent non-Muslims are killed, they are collateral damage. This is a volume of expression that hides the larger volume of policies that have been victimizing 1.5 billion Muslims in the world. Six or seven thousand people we are told are killed in the land of liberty and freedom. Meanwhile, around the world, it has become common practice to target innocent human 
human beings with the staggering results of almost daily killings in the thousands of Muslims. What has been going on in the past 10, 15, and 20 years when Muslim blood in their eyes was cheap and doesn't even solicit a comment of sympathy or understanding why Muslims are subhuman. Muslims don't have lives that are worth honoring. And all of this does not mean by any stretch of the imagination that Muslims are involved in what, for all we know, is an act of Israeli, Zionist, Jewish aggression upon this country. Why can't Muslims come out and non-Muslims alike You still have a modicum of normal thought and undisturbed thinking. Why can't we come out and say it as we see it? That a Zionist Israeli Jewish hand is at work in these incidents. And we don't speak out of emotion. Let us look at the circumstantial evidence that points to the direction of the Mossad and the Israelis in what has happened in both New York and Washington. The first issue is Israeli Prime Minister Butcher Sharon it is said was supposed to come to the United States on that particular day or the day before that and then all of a sudden he cancelled his visit to this country should we believe that is a coincidence or he knew something others did not know. That's the first question no one has answered out there. In their vile attack against Islam and against the Muslims. Number two. The stock market. The Monday before that, those incidents showed that there are dealers who are selling airline stock at an abnormal rate, tens if not hundreds of times of what they normally sell at. Is this a matter of chance or do some people know what other people do not know? Why don't they answer that for us? Number three. It was reported that there's about 4,000 Israelis. And they haven't clarified whether these are Israelis, period, or Israelis and Americans who carry dual citizenship. We're supposed to be in those buildings in New York on that day. But they didn't show up. Did they know something we do not know? And why don't they answer that for us? Or are we supposed to be deaf, dumb, deaf, and blind to these issues? Besides, why? Did the Israeli government on that day close down all its diplomatic missions? 
Are they afraid of something? If you haven't done if you haven't done anything wrong, what are you afraid of? But if you know you're guilty, you know you've done something wrong, then you take precautions. You defend yourself and protect yourself. Why did they do that? Number five. There were planes. Remember in the past several years, a Swiss Air, a TWA, and an Egypt, a, Egyptian airliner that went down off the coast of New York. Why are some of these aviation tragedies almost specific to New York? Could it be that these airliners, Boeing 757 and Boeing 767, that are highly technical, with high technology, could they have been controlled from the airport in New York to do what they did? And could those other airliners that went off and went down in the area of New York, could they have been trial run? commandeering a plane with the tragic results that we had? Answer these questions for us, please, before you point fingers of accusation at Muslims. And it's a shame that we have some Muslims who are standing up on the minbar on Friday and putting themselves in the position that they have to defend Islam. Some of them are speaking about how Islam shows mercy to animals. That's how apologetic we have become. All of these years we have been saying, without much attention, mind you, that the United States and Israel, in the form of their government, are two sides of the same currency. And the Israeli government has instruments of war that are dipped into Muslim blood. And now, some of our Muslim speakers want to come along and tell us no. There's a difference between the government in, the, in Washington and the government in Tel Aviv. And they begin to feel sorry because the building that represents military plans in this world and the other two buildings that represent economic and financial hegemony in this world they were struck from deep down inside the conspiratorial mind of the Jewish-Israeli Mossad. And then Muslims want to come and fend for themselves as if we had something to do with all of this. Still, some questions haven't been answered. The names that they are quoting of individuals who are alive where do they get these names from? Why don't you answer these questions for us? Before you put us in positions to feel that we are responsible for what happened. You're not responsible for what happened. And the Israeli Zionist Jews are not going to get away with this. They've been trying for the past 10 or 15 years to put together an alliance in the world against Islamic self-determination. 
which they conveniently present to the world to serve their own purposes as international terrorism. And now, with a magic stroke, the United States government in a couple of weeks has done what the Israeli government has failed at doing in a couple of decades. Trying to whip up a hysteria against Islam and against Muslims. And you think there is no God that exists? He doesn't see what they are doing. Freedom. You deny freedoms in this world. And then you accuse a man who is out there in the wilderness of Afghanistan. As if he is capable about, of doing all of this. And you don't want to listen to what he's saying. He said, I have nothing to do with this. Yet, you insist that Muslims are responsible for this. And not any type of Muslim. Muslims who want self-determination. You speak a lot about the electoral process and about democracy. Okay, open up public opinion in the Arabian Peninsula and see whether that public opinion wants military bases on its own land. Isn't this democracy and the electoral process? Why can't Muslims pursue until the end what you sing about in the world and you claim to practice at home? But you withhold from Muslims one-fourth of the human race. Then we have some African Americans. We feel that a tragedy has happened. What happened on that one day during this month doesn't even amount to one page of what has happened to African Americans in the past four and five centuries. And now they have bleeding hearts because capitalists and because military brass were supposed to have been killed in these operations that, mind you, and I say once again, are not the acts of committed Muslims but definitely that can serve the purpose of Allah Azza wa Jal. Just two or three years ago, and words here are for African Americans, two or three years ago, American interests and French interests clashed on the continent of Africa, and two million people were killed where was the outrage in the African-American community concerning two million people who were killed because of who's going to take control of the natural resources in Africa? Is it going to be the United States or is it going to be France? Where was your concern for innocent lives? Or you only know innocent lives through the Western media. You only know precious lives through the Western media. Let me remind you, in a more coached tone, what the intrigue of the Israeli Jewish Zionists is. We all remember 1993, or was it 94, when the first explosions took place in New York in the same buildings that were brought down a couple of weeks ago. We all know also how they trumped the whole issue up and they put Muslims behind bars because of that. But there is some pertinent information not many people are aware of. 
a glimpse into the world of intrigue, hostility, conspiracy, and evil doing is the following. A Palestinian was caught in Tel Aviv, or rather in Jerusalem, because he was trying to counterfeit money, trying to make fake currency. And the Israeli government arrests a Palestinian and brings him to court and sentences him to two and a half years in prison. After the first year of being in prison, he is recruited by the Mossad. And he is told, he agreed to be recruited by the Mossad. And he agreed to do what they tell him to do, to gain his freedom. So they task him. They tell him to smuggle arms for al fatah for fact, the military wing of the Palestine Liberation Organization, the major one. And they told him that in the process of smuggling these arms, they are going to arrest him so that he will gain credibility and status among his own people. And that's what happened. He tries to smuggle arms for the PLO, and then the Israeli authorities apprehend him in the act. And then his popularity towers among the Palestinians. And then after that, all of a sudden, he shows up in Peshawar and goes to Afghanistan. Remember, this is in the last year, in the waning months of the Soviet occupation of Afghanistan. And he goes there with some credentials because he was presented as fighting or trying to help those who are fighting against the Israelis. And he enters into the inner circles of Muslims there. And from there, with whatever information he passes along to his handlers in Mossad, from there, he turns up in New York with a forged Swedish passport. And he enters the Islamic circles in New York. And among the Palestinians, he is known to have tried to help the liberation movement back home. So they had no reason to doubt his presence. And then gradually he began to make his way deep into the activities and the thoughts and the expectations and hopes of Muslims. Until finally he appears as one of the individuals who were indicted for what happened at the World Trade Center in New York several years ago. Could that be the only person around who's doing something like that or trying to do something like that? Do they think Muslims are naive? And with all the fabrications that they can systematically present to us, that they are going to draw us into their web of synthesizing false information? No! Besides, who is looking at this issue in the frame of reference of Vulm that they are up to? Vulm that we mentioned in the ayat and in the hadith. Inna Allah la yuhibbu al-qawma al-zalimi Inna Allah la yahdi al-qawma al-zalimi إن الله لا يحب الظالمين الظلم ظلمات يوم القيامة يا عبادي إني حرمت الظلم على نفسي وجعلته بينكم محرما فلا 
پواله بود Now, watch, sisters and brothers, you watch the coming week and what this system of zulm in the world is, trying, is going to try to do. They're going to try to begin an operation of ending Islamic self-determination at the periphery. And then they will try to move in to the heart of the matter. You think they're interested in Afghanistan? Or are they interested in the mineral-rich Caspian Sea area and Central Asia? Where they see there are lucrative profits there. Or are they interested in destabilizing an Islamic state next? to Afghanistan? Or are they interested in trying to put an end to the net nuclear capabilities that Muslims have acquired in Pakistan? And once they have that job finished, or they think they will have it finished, little do they know that they are venturing into an area that has been militarized for the past 20 years. He said, 15 and 20 years ago, when the U.S. showed that its foreign policy is predicated upon aggression and support for local tyranny in our land, he said, the only thing they are doing is recruiting against them. They are causing Muslim people to think in a military mind against what they are doing. And if they make an appearance among Muslims, and then they have the body bags coming back, then they will understand that they will be involved in an area of the world to which their entrance was easy, but from which their exit should be the most difficult task in their history. What do they think they've done to the Muslims in all of these years? What have they done to the Muslims in Palestine? Did they break their spirit? Or did they militarize them? What have they done to the Muslims surrounding Palestine, in Lebanon, in Jordan, in Syria, in Egypt? Are they breaking their spirit? Or are they reinforcing a military determination among them? What are they doing to the Muslims in Sudan? What are they doing to the Muslims in Algeria? What are they doing to the Muslims in the Balkans? What are they doing to the Muslims in Chechnya? What are they doing to the Muslims in the Caucasus? What are they doing to the Muslims in Central Asia? What are they doing to the Muslims in Kashmir? What are they doing to the Muslims in Indonesia? There's one answer that is common among all of these areas and more. And that is, they are forcing the Muslims to opt for a military solution to their problems. The only way Zul can be deconstructed and disestablished is to face off against these who are roaming around our territories with their military might, swinging around and flexing their muscles. They're going to be deflated. It's going to take time. Yes, they are true. They're not going to be able to go in one week or one month and then leave. They're looking at a matter of years. And as long as Muslim lives are equivalent to fleas and flies in their eyes, they will not see what they want to call a civilized and modern understanding. You heard yesterday or the day before a president from Europe speaks about a clash of civilizations. 
in terms of Christian civilization being superior to Islamic civilization. This is the language of slavery recycled. And then we have these inferior Muslims and these other inferior people who think that truth is on the side of those or victory is on the side of those who have power. No, victory is on the side of those who have truth and are looking for justice. And let me remind you that Allah says, وعد الله الذين آمنوا منكم وعملوا الصالحات ليستخلفنهم في الأرض كما استخلف الذين من قبلهم وليمكنن لهم دينهم الذي ارتضى لهم وليبدلنهم من بعد خوفهم أمنا يعبدونني لا يشركون بي شيئا ومن كفر بعد ذلك فأولئك هم الفاسقون أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم ادعوه سبحانه وانتم موقنون بالاجابه وتوبوا الى الله غافر الذنب وقابل التوب واستغفروه انه كان غفارا الله بجميع المحامد على جميع النعم صلى الله وسلم على المبعوث خيرا ورحمة وهدى لكافة الأمم محمد النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم Brothers and sisters, Muslims who ask and plead and beg Allah جل جلاله إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم Today the 28th of September Mark one year in which the war criminal who was elected by an unprecedented majority of votes by the Israelis to deliver them from the Intifada. His campaign was, as he spoke to the Israeli Zionist public, give me 100 days as Prime Minister of Israel and I will finish this Intifada. And then they gave him these accolades. He's the bulldozer. Yes, he is the bulldozer, but not in that sense that they mean he's going to bulldoze. The first 100 days go by. The Intifada didn't come to an end. The second 100 days go by and the Intifada has not simmered down. And this war criminal is beginning his third 100 days in office. And his only hope is now that this worldwide development that took place a couple of weeks ago is capable of putting an end to this Intifada. And hence, the diplomatic pressure on the Palestinian Authority, which doesn't represent the Palestinians, and on the Israeli Authority, which represents the Israelis, to finally work out their differences. This is not a time to try to put the Intifada on the back burner, or to sideline the Intifada. If there are requirements of intensifying this intifada. It is at this time so that these 
Israeli Zionist Jews will understand that we understand what they are up to. During this past year, they tell us, and they're doing the counting, over 800 individuals were killed in the Holy Land. Three-fourths of them, and once again they're still doing the counting, three-fourths of them are Palestinian. Even at that rate, we are satisfied. Because as this continues, Besides the one million of them who skipped their own country, four million Zionist Israelis, out of four million, one million of them left. Is this a fighting power? And then they realize another million of them are preparing to leave. So they set up recruiting offices around the world to get mercenaries to fight for them. And the other two or three million of them who remain there, we ask how many of them have dual citizenship, are citizens of other countries, the United States, European countries, South Africa, Australia, Canada, etc. Probably three-fourths of them. Where have you heard in history a country whose citizens belong not to the country and the state itself, but to other countries in the world. Four-fifths of the population carry more than an Israeli citizenship. Are these people who want a country, first they said they want an electrical fence around that country, then they reconsidered, then they said they want a tall, wall to be erected around the country. Then they said that's not practical. They reconsidered. Now they're saying they want a buffer zone of two to three kilometers, no man's land, that separates them from other peoples around. And they want to do all of this, and they want us to say they are not racist. And they want us to say they are not practicing apartheid to the power 10 or the power 100. And then they want to get away with what they are doing here in the United States. They want to do all of that before the Muslims return to what Allah is telling them. They sense Muslims here and there are beginning to listen to Allah. And that's dangerous for them. So they want to preempt us. We will continue. The Intifada will continue. Islamic self-determination will continue. And they can pack their bags and they can close their military bases and they can leave freely or else they have to face up to our self-determination. And we are not doing this because of any nationalism or any, any other expression of selfishness. We are doing this because we are Allah's subjects and Allah's servants. Allahumma arina al-haqqa haqqan warzuqna tiba'ah wa arina al-baatila baatilan warzuqna ijtinaba wa la taj'alhum ul-tabisan alayna waj'alna lil-muttaqina imama اللهم إليك نشكو ضعف قوتنا وقلة حيلتنا وهوانا على الناس يا أرحم الراحمين أنت ربنا وأنت رب المستضعفين فإلى من تكلنا إلى غريب يتجهمنا أم إلى عدو ملكته أمرنا إن لم يكن بك علينا غضب فلا نبالي ولكن عافيتك هي أوسع لنا نعود بنور وجهك الذي أشرقت له الظلمات وصلح عليه أمر الدنيا والآخرة من أن تنزل بنا غضبك أو تحل علينا صخفك لك العتبى حتى ترضى ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بك 
ان الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا ايها الذين امنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد وال محمد اللهم بارك على محمد وال محمد اللهم صل على ابراهيم وال ابراهيم اللهم بارك على ابراهيم وال ابراهيم في العالمين انك حميد مجيد بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والعصر ان الانسان لفي خسر الا الذين امنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر ومن اظلم ممن منع مساجد الله ان يذكر فيها اسمه وسعى في خرابها اولئك ما كان لهم ان يدخلوها الا خائفين لهم في الدنيا خزي ولهم في الاخره عذاب عظيم ان الله يامركم ان تؤدوا الامانات الى اهلها واذا حكمتم بين الناس ان تحكموا بالعدل ان الله نعم ما يعظكم به ان الله كان سميعا بصيرا ولا ذكر الله اكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون يعلم السر واخفى يعلم ما في الصدور ويعلم خائنه العيون واقم الصلاه الله اكبر الله اكبر اشهد ان لا اله الا الله اشهد ان محمدا رسول الله حي على الصلاه حي على الصلاه قد قامت الصلاه قد قامت الصلاه الله اكبر الله اكبر لا اله الا الله اللهم رب هذه الدعوة التامة والصلاة القائمة ات سيدنا محمد الوسيلة والفضيلة والدرجة العالية رفيعة بارك اللهم مقاما محمودا والحوض المورود كما وعدته الله اكبر بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين اياك نعبد واياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين انعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الرحمن الرحيم والعاديات ضبحا فالموريات قدحا فالمغيرات صبحا فأثرن به نقعا فوسطن به جمعا إن الإنسان لرب به لكنود وإنه على ذلك لشهيد وإنه لحب الخير لشديد أفلا يعلم إذا بعثر ما في القبور وحص إلى ما في الصدور إن ربهم بهم يومئذ لخبير الله أكبر سمع 
الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد وعلي محمد اللهم صل على محمد وعلي محمد اللهم صل على محمد وعلي محمد بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لا إله إلا الله إلها واحدا ونحن له مسلمون لا إله إلا الله ولا نعبد إلا إياه مخلصين له الدين ولو كره المشركون لا إله إلا الله ربنا ورب آبائنا الأفضلين 
لا إله إلا الله وحده 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 أنجز وعده ونسر غده وعز جنده وحزم الأحزاب وحده فله الملك وله لحام يحيي ويميت ويميت ويحيي وهو حي لا يموت بيد الخير وهو على كل شيء قدير الله